In today's video, these pieces go in that truck today on Challenge the Build. All right, so before we get to showing you the table full of goodies that we're gonna install in this truck, I wanted to show you guys the completed seat install. In the last video, we installed this seat into the truck, and the last thing I needed to do was finish the welding on the hinge, and then also bolt it to the frame. So I've finalized the seat installation, um, and we missed where I should say I missed a uh, very important part in any project, and that's uh, crossing it off the list. So after I show you this side, so what I went ahead and did is I've got quick pins for, rather than bolts, I'm using pins on this side. So anytime that you need to get in, you pull the pins and then I'll set up the camera here. Let me see if I can set up the camera. I'll set the camera up and show you my prop rod for the seat. And there is the final product, a little prop rod for the seat once you pivot the seat up just like a hood put the prop rod down just a simple little 3 8 bolt self nylon locking nut and now we have full access to the battery tray and now for the best part of almost any project other than getting to enjoy it and drive it around this is just as the list says first of many punch lists Anything that has an asterisk by it are the ones that I was going to focus on first while the cab of the truck was still on. So let's see if we can find it. Actually, this one is done too. It's kind of hard to do this and hold the camera. So that is completed as well. And... So mount the steering column, that's what we're gonna work on next. And seat install, locate seat with mounts. Lucky number 13. So what a, what a great way to start a video with already accomplishing two things on the list. All right, so I'm sitting back in the truck. I put my dashboard temporarily in place because I wanted you guys to see what was kind of going on in here when I originally cut the dashboard well let me go back even a little bit farther obviously because of this gigantic monstrosity going on here I had to shift my whole driving position over approximately we'll say four inches if you're familiar with Tri-5 Chevy trucks, this area down here where my foot is is where the steering column used to go in at. And then if you look here, right past the brake pedal, right there, that's the dimmer switch for the high beams, the high-low switch for the high beams. So in relation to where my brake pedal is and where my gas pedal is going to be, it shifted quite a bit distance over to the left to make room for what I got going on under under this dog box. So I've already done some some work getting ready for the steering column. The reason I have this in here is because I wanted to show you what it would look like and also the mistake that I made for when I sectioned my dashboard. <laughs> I was supposed to put this three inch piece over here because it was supposed to come this way and I screwed up and I put it in the middle. So this is a project for another day. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out because now that lets you see more light down in here anyway. So moving the position over to the left, I took out the old 
pretty much dashboard, steering column, brake pedal assembly, and started from scratch. Um, I have eighth wall, inch and a quarter, flat stock that I've since welded in, and I took a piece of three by six, three sixteenths rectangle tubing and cut the bottom out of it for this piece, and then welded everything in nice and tight. I still have to finish welding it, this back here is the brake pedal and clutch pedal assembly from an um, early 80s C10, I believe. Um, it is with a slave cylinder clutch and not the cable push style clutch. So we're going to have to probably get into some, some magic with the clutch pedal. But that's again for another episode. Right now we're focusing on the steering column. So that's what we're going to be doing. So I have the mount for... The two inch drop here, I'm gonna show you the parts and the pieces that I have on the table. So these are the goodies that we are gonna be installing. So this is the two inch mount that I have already installed. I'll uh, take you back over here. So this was already fabbed up to install here. So this has to be installed again here. I took it back out to continue the work on the, the trans tunnel. This is gonna be the mount for the bottom of the steering column. This is gonna go in the firewall and then the steering column is gonna slide down in it and then clamp to it. This is just a piece of two and a quarter inch exhaust tubing that I cut and narrowed down. Let's see if I can show you. You can see it cut and overlapped on each other. So that's gonna be the bottom mount. The steering column, unfortunately, I'm sorry to tell you that it doesn't look like they make this anymore. Uh, a lot of the parts that I've been buying for this truck have been through Amazon. And you will notice that when you click on the description and the drop down comes down, I am an Amazon affiliate member. Uh, so the, purchase that, the purchases that you guys make will help me out and i do make a small commission off of them uh, at no expense to you guys but the purchases that you make through the links that i provide you guys will help fund projects like this and more projects to come i have a lot of ideas in uh, in the future of what i want to bring for you guys but i did some research on the steering column and unfortunately the steering column it does not look like they sell anymore on Amazon. I was going to try to give you guys a good budget hot rod steering column. I paid, I think, $165 or $170 for this. Now, there is a company out there on Amazon that has a very similar steering column, but it's just not chrome. It's plain steel. So I will link that one as well. But I can tell you now, I have no uh, information regarding that steering column. But what I can say is the steering wheel. The steering wheel I chose for this truck is a 15 inch wood grain and polished aluminum tri-spoke. The steering wheel comes from a company called Flash Power. Again, I will link it in the description below. Uh, I did have to option it with the custom chrome horn button for the center. And in research, Flash Power has a lot of cool steering wheels. Uh, for a relatively good price for the budget uh, budget minded hot rod builder so that is enough of me talking it's time to get to work these are the pieces it's time to install the bottom mount install the column and move on to the next part of the build so the first step that we're going to do is we are going to install the top two inch drop mount and then what we're going to do is mount the steering column in that and slide the bottom mount through the steering column and attach the bottom mount to the truck so i'll set the camera up in the truck we'll install the top mount get the steering column installed then weld the bottom mount in and check fitment
right, so now that the steering column is installed, what you're gonna to wanna to do is sit in the driver's seat and then check the center line of the column to your body. Actually, it probably would be a good idea to get the steering wheel. Put the steering wheel on. Check your seating position to the column. Make any fine tune adjustments that you need to before you weld in the bottom mount. Another thing that I want to point out to you is when you're installing a drop mount like this, this is aluminum. So be really careful when you're threading in your bolts into the aluminum. Take your time and make sure you don't cross thread them. I was having a hard time getting these started. So just have a little bit of patience. Take your time, thread them in. So this way here you don't damage uh, the threads of the piece that you bought. I will have to buy bigger hardware for the top side though. Uh, later on, but for right now temporarily these work just fine So I'm gonna make my fine-tune adjustments and then we're gonna go in and weld the bottom mount in clamp it up nice and tight And see how this thing actually fits Alright, so I'm very pleased at how this came out. The uh, exhaust pipe with the two hose clamps worked out beautifully. Once I get the steering column out of here and the brake pedals out of here, I'm going to cut some sheet metal and patch in the rest of the sheet metal around the radius of the exhaust pipe and finish welding that up. But overall, this bad boy, I don't know if you can see that. You can definitely see the camera moving, but I am shaking the whole truck when I'm shaking on the column it's very very sturdy very very pleased with it i'm going to put the steering wheel on it now for the big payoff same thing with these bolts take your time threading them in because you don't want to mess the steering column up And the beautiful part about this is with the way I have it mounted in the top mount and also the bottom mount, it still allows it to slide up and down so I can get final placement. But overall, with where I have it set, the column is straight, spins nicely, it's nice and strong. Overall, I am super stoked at the steering wheel and the steering column that I got. Looks good in the truck. And now, the part that I forgot when I installed the seat, I would say that the steering column is done. So, number four, mount, steering column. Awesome. Now I gotta just pick my next one off the list and figure out well this one here i guess uh, i already have the gas pedal that's just a matter of screwing it down so the next thing i got to do is pick off what i want to work on the list and get ready to work on that and uh we are one step closer to getting the truck done so that wraps up the next step in the build process for my 1959 viking to find out any information about the products that i used in this video Check the description below to stay up to date on this build make sure that you subscribe to this channel please give me a thumbs up like this video if you enjoyed the content my name is Paul Michael remember get out there challenge to build and I will see you in the next video